Republican. I don't know why for a brief moment I thought the Democratic Party would do like the courageous thing and the right thing for its own survival, but they're gearing up for the Brandon run. They're doing the Brandon push. Okay, White House press briefing is happening as Democrats debate around, uh, Democrats are debating around Biden's path forward. The caucuses are occurring today, okay? We are going to be talking about that, obviously. What is this? No, I've seen this. They can't stand him, so let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. And that's based on <laughs> every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, the Democrats have gotten together and they are deciding, wait, did he get the, what, totally. is, what is happening? Right now? I'll go check. Why is this? Why is everything always happening? As soon as I go live, the current press briefing is so bad here. We'll tune in live to see what the is going on and then we'll get to other shit. I remember you were asked about it by reporters and you said, you know, we shouldn't read too much into the fact that he's skipping one dinner. I mean, yeah. what would the explanation actually have been? that he was tired and that he needed to skip I something that was I, happening so my, late in the and evening. And my answer stays the same. I wouldn't read too much into it. It's not the first time that he has. Uh, he has uh, a really busy schedule and there's a lot going on. As you know, when the president is abroad, he has continued to do domestic stuff as well as, uh, as, well as meeting with global leaders. And so I truly would not read too much into it uh, and I will leave it there. Very final question on the, the annual um, okay. sure, sure. letter from Dr. O'Connor. Uh, he said that the president continues to be fit for duty and fully executes all of his responsibilities without any exemptions or accommodations. Just because it's been a couple of months, do you know if that statement is still accurate? It's still accurate. So no exemptions, no accommodations? No exemptions, no accommodations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I mean, it was in a um, announcement from the Department of Justice. Yeah, she's a pretty bad press secretary. I'm not going to lie. Like, there's no reason to hide that at all. She's just not very good. Uh, anyway, here's uh, Axios reporting on this. Just before the House Democrats Tuesday morning come to Jesus meeting on Biden's path forward, a smaller group of swing district Democrats held what sources described as a despondent gathering with actual tears. Oh, my God, dude. I'm telling you right now, for the next, you know, however many months as it is until November, I guess it's like four. Every single day, you are going to hear about uh, how old Biden is and how he is going to die, okay? If he does not drop out, if he does not drop out, and it seems like he's not going to, for the record, because he's very firmly committed to staying in the race, and the rest of the Democrats are going to have to, you know, cave on his wishes because he is God King Emperor. I'm telling you right now, for the next four months, we are only going, this is going to be the only media narrative. Unless God Almighty wills it, okay? Since 2016, it's felt like the DNC speedrunning losing their voter base, but it might just be recency uh, bias. No, this is one of the unique instances where I think the Democratic Party is actively trying to do something about it, but are kind of cooked. I'm telling you right now, no. The Democratic Party this time around is legitimately trying to do something about it. I've never seen... I, dude, come on. You don't see high-ranking Democratic Party centrist establishment defenders come out and be like, I love this guy, but he has to drop out. That's crazy. That is unheard of. That did not happen with Hillary Clinton. Obviously, it would not have happened with Hillary Clinton because like Hillary because it was also defeating Donald Trump at the polls and was not seen as like demented. She was just seen as evil, right? Which <laughs> Democrats don't care about that. <laughs> but the 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 reality of the matter is right now you actually have Democrats, establishment Democrats, institutional Democrats, centrist Democrats who love Biden, like legitimately love Biden, love his uh, legacy, are, are are absolutely worried about the future of the party. Why did AOC endorse him so fast? I covered this extensively yesterday. Obviously, I'm going to have to repeat all of the statements that I made yesterday. As soon as Summer Lee was the first uh, out of the squad that was asked about this question, as soon as I saw what she said, I recognized that the, the uh, progressives are going to uh, stay out of the, the conversation. They're just going to be like, yeah, Biden's the candidate. He's the GOAT. It's awesome. Uh, I think AOC went above and beyond in her statement. I, I don't think she should have done that. I don't think she should have gone as far as she did. Mike said you're coping. No, I, I think that's, um, 
that's they're playing politics, but I think that's what they're, and this is pure speculation, but I think that's what they're doing. Cause ultimately it's like, if they're coming out strong, it doesn't mean anything. And it only has the capacity to, to negatively polarize people against, uh, or negatively polarize people towards, uh, defending Biden. Um, but ultimately I think she does not have the best political instincts in the way that she, like she's playing politics. It's a win-win for her. But I think ultimately she should not have gone above and beyond in the way that she did. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders has been doing that too. Like Bernie Sanders has been doing that too. But remember, I think like, I think ultimately there is a, uh, this is on the hands of the actual Democrats with institutional power. They are the ones who are trying to fix the situation. This is not AOC or Ilhan Omar's battle. I don't think they see it as their own battle. I think they see it as like, well, this is your thing, you know, fix it. We're just going to bring uh, the youth vote. We're just going to bring the youth vote come November. That's our job. We're just going to keep pumping that. It doesn't really matter. Trying to prove you're a team player to a team that hates you will always have you looking foolish. I think that's their own calculation. Um, that's my that's my assessment. And I might be totally wrong on it. Like I said, it's it's pure speculation. And I don't like the message that came from AOC. I don't think it was good. I don't think it was smart. I don't I think there's a much better way to like stay out of it. Or even if you're gonna say, like, I care about the policies, that's what I'm here for. That's the classic Bernie Sanders uh talk. Anytime there's like palace intrigue, Bernie hits that line. It's policy time, baby. I don't give a shit what's going on. Okay. And I think she was trying to do that. And I don't think she did a good job with it. And, um, and ultimately, uh, ultimately though, my speculation, like I said, is just like, they're trying to stay out of it. But having said that, having said that, who knows what happens at the end of this caucus, but like, it does kind of seem like maybe they're just going to go with Joe, you know, isn't Nancy another pressure point on Biden? No, we need... Nancy Pelosi, we need you to be the grand mamala of the country. Speaker Emerita, Nancy Pelosi, the former speaker, has privately told people she's deeply uneasy with Biden staying in. She loves him, but she's ruthlessly practical. See, that's what I'm saying. When you got Nancy Pelosi coming out of the gates and like saying shit like, I don't know if Biden should be the guy. It's not up to AOC to say anything. If we're thinking about this, if we're thinking about this from the perspective of like the ideological boundaries that are set inside of the Democratic Party, the smartest thing to do is just you know, let the chaos pass over you. Don't touch it. You know, this is not a moment where like this, in my opinion, is not a moment where like you want to be a, a standout person, especially when the big dogs that normally would be the ones defending Biden are the ones who are telling Biden to, in polite terms, leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm so glad the U.S. has no maximum age limit for presidents. This is so much better than letting someone under the age of 60 run. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. If you're like black pilled, you just look at the situation and you're like, well, at least fun stuff are happening. Fun stuff is happening. Wall Street Journal, German officials aware of Biden's fatigue at night sought to accommodate the president by planning a June 2022 event with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in early evening. What? This is 2022? The informal event, a soiree at the Alpine Resort Schloss Elmau, during the Group of Seven, Sieben Summit, was arranged as a confidential meeting on Ukraine in a relaxed setting. Biden didn't show up, surprising the chancellor and his aides, officials said. Instead, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arrived and announced that Biden had got to go to bed. Oh, no. More. As some fundraising events, the campaign allows a few impromptu moments with the president, even with top donors. So they are, they, they have this man in a vat, okay? They, they do not let this man have a moment, <laughs> which I think is pretty funny, but probably smart. It's just the issue is uh, it's no longer as smart. It's not necessarily smart when, you know, everybody in the country, everybody in the dang nation is talking about how old this guy is. Right now, Biden needs to be someone he's not. A younger person, a vibrant person, okay? And the reality is he, he can't, you know, it's impossible for him to do so. I'm going to go backwards, but just to share a little bit about that night. The president said it was a bad night. Uh, he talked about it. He had a, a cold. Right. He talked about his schedule Told you. Right, uh, being abroad. Uh, yep. And so we've spoke about what that night. Told you. Members left the DNC. One thing is clear. House Dems increasingly think Biden is going to survive as the nominee. They're cowards, baby. There ain't nothing they can do. What would you say that Trump has a good policy and you would like Biden to have that? What out of Trump's policies? Um, having a thick 
having a thick ass pretty much i think that's like that's it like i would like biden to have a thicker uh a bottom like a like a fat bussy like he's pretty stacked um that's it not really much else like if 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 Brandon had a BBL, if Brandon got a BBL to look more like Trump, which I think is the next step, next step, next step in the, uh, the, the, the Trump pivot that he's doing currently, I think he needs to get a BBL. Where Trump get that bussy from? Clown college? Someone in the chat said anti-NATO. Yeah, I don't, I question Donald Trump's anti-NATO bona fides, okay? Uh, people just are delusional. The only, dip okay, low-key, from the way that Trump operates, there's a couple of things that he's done that has become the norm, okay? Obviously, using uh, uh, the CDC rules to, like, shut down immigration, that was one big one. Another one that has become the norm is also the tariffs on China. Biden is literally continuing the tariffs and, uh, and adding new tariffs on China and running on adding new tariffs on China. Another thing that Trump did that the Biden administration is also following on is mostly just like all the foreign policy stuff. The Biden admin has, you know, verbatim copied and pasted Donald Trump's foreign policy with some exceptions. And I wouldn't say it's a good thing. I think that's a very bad thing. Um, but even on the NATO front, I suspect that Donald Trump is not anti-NATO. Donald Trump is just saying we need to squeeze. He sees the writing on the wall and he says we need to squeeze the protection racket a little bit further. And uh, originally, I would say in 2016, I always suspected that to be silly. And for the duration of the Trump presidency, I said, I continued to say, that's silly. That's not how NATO works. NATO is for the defense contractors. NATO is a protection racket, but it's a protection racket that benefits the American corporations. You can't just like, like, I never thought that he would be anti-NATO. I don't think that he's anti-NATO anyway. But I do think that his opinion on NATO was, let's get more money from these European cucks, these Euro cucks that were, you know, given all these weapons to. It should be more. It should be more than just influence peddling. It should be beyond that. They should just uh, give us more money. It's like when the mafia is on, um, when the mafia is not doing well and they come in and they want extra money for the protection racket that they have going on. And I think that's what he was advocating for. And I think that that will probably be kind of the policy up uh, in the, in the same way that like, People were very resistant towards tariffs, and then they just decided, no, that is the right thing to do politically. And I think that that's probably what uh, whatever future administration, whatever future administration is, is uh, you know, continuing on that uh, trajectory will probably also demand more from NATO, from the NATO alliances, you know? But I don't think, um, I don't think anybody's, like, abolishing NATO. Like, Trump is certainly not. accomplishments. Uh, President's allies have made some version of that argument and not pay attention to what he said on stage, but what his accomplishments uh, are. But when you're, when you're the President of the United States, don't words matter? So when you're the President of the United States, uh, I think any, kind, any leader, right, especially including a former President, your words do matter. You're 100 percent correct. Uh, the President has owned up to that night. He said it was a bad night. He said this. He said this many times. He's even said he screwed up. So those are the president's words. That's all I can give you at this time. We do believe that we should not just look at the 90 minutes. The president has, had, has done more than any other modern day president's administration. Historic, historic things have gotten done. When I was watching the Democratic caucus, they talked about $35 uh, insulin, right, capping that. When you think about seniors who are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars, we were able to get that done uh, because of a, a very important piece of legislation that we, mo we moved through, right? Uh, and only Democrats made that happen. That's also because of the leadership of this president. And that's just one. That's a bipartisan infrastructure legislation. There's the Chips and Science Act. There's the, uh, the PACT Act for our veterans. I mean, there are things that he's been able to do that Elected officials, presidents before him have been trying to do and could not get done, get done beating, uh, beating Big Pharma. So there is a long list of impressive things that this president has been able to get done, getting us out of the pandemic, that we do believe is important to note here as well uh, as an accomplishment of this presidency. 
Another question that I don't think has been asked, correct me if it has. Yeah. Um, the White House and also the campaign has said that he had a cold that night. He then went to a watch party afterwards, which you mm -hmm. have brought up. I was at that watch party. If he did have a cold, why then push into another event where he spent some 45 minutes along the rope line? I mean, and not just the, and I would add to that, it wasn't just a watch party. We landed at 2 a.m. in the morning in North Carolina. He greeted hundreds of uh, North Carolinians in North Carolina. He woke up the next day in North Carolina. I don't know why for a brief moment, I thought the Democratic Party would do like the courageous thing and the right thing, right? For its own survival. Uh, but I, I do think that it might be Jover in terms of like uh, Joe Biden continuing. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But this is a big week. And barring like Joe literally having a medical emergency, and they might even push through the medical emergency depending on the when it happens. Okay. Um, they might just be, uh, they might just be circling. Is the circling the wagons the right term? Like they're, they're gearing up for the Brandon run. They're doing the Brandon push. Her explanation hurts the argument saying he kept going into meetings and greetings while he was sick. Yeah, he's an old man. It's fine. Old man diseases don't uh, kill young, vibrant individuals. John Stewart did a big vid on this. I know we're, of course, going to be talking about the John Stewart video on this. Um, I think the DNC doesn't care about losing to Trump. They can fundraise easily. No, 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 no. I think that's the... The things that I have heard from top Democratic establishment officials are quite unlikely, okay? They are unique. They are not normal things that you hear from the likes of Nancy Pelosi, from the likes of, of you know, like committee leaders and shit. Like, nah, nah, this time is like, you're making stuff up. Which ones? Brother... Are, is your head d directly in the sand over the course of the past week? Nancy Pelosi is the one who voluntarily, Speaker Emeritus, voluntarily came out and on television said, the people deserve to know if this is a one-off or if this is an episode or if this is a continuing problem. She also leaked to news outlets that the former speaker has privately told people she's deeply uneasy with Biden staying in. She loves him, but she's ruthlessly practical. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries is one of the most cautious politicians in America, so it's hard to see him making a dramatic move. Pelosi, whose office says she has full confidence in Biden, could play the heavy. Biden respects her iconic stature, and knows she pulled miraculous moves to pass the legislative agenda. He would listen reluctantly, but he'd listen to her, a person close to Biden tells us. This information does not get out unless Nancy Pelosi wants it out, okay? In my life, I've never seen someone who is such a, like establishment figurehead a bulwark for the democratic party come out and say the top of the ticket is personally not the best person and we need to swap him out before it's too late you don't understand <sighs> it's just top of this dick in my mouth how about top of the hour i know that i've uh conditioned you guys in the most pavlovian way to respond to any moment where i say top of the but this time it is actually top of the hour and there's a three minute ad break. Then why aren't they organizing more powerfully beyond a whisper campaign? If they actually know he's likely to lose and they actually care about not losing. I've already told you, I, I explained this yesterday. This is okay. A couple of reasons. One um, here for, I'm going to run the three minute ad break right now, but I'm, and then I'm gonna give you the reasons. Okay. And by the way, if you don't longer want to see those ads, uh, you know, if you don't want that to be paywalled, then all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free uh, with a Twitch Prime. Here's the three-minute break now. Okay? So, reasons. Reason number one, Democrats are pussies. Okay? That's just like, a, like they don't want to rock the boat, usually. Even in instances where, like, they don't have a lot to lose, they still don't want to rock the boat. They're cowards. Okay? So, that's number one. Number two, in this circumstance... The, the actual calculation is dire. The actual calculation is pretty serious because if they were to outwardly shit on Biden aggressively, instead of just being like, hey, we love you, you should probably step aside. It would be cool if you did that, okay? And try to communicate to him through the television that he needs to step aside. If they just keep it at that and then Biden listens, then it's perfect. Then they can quietly 
put together a, a new person, most likely Kamala Harris, and find a solid VP for Kamala Harris and put their best foot forward. If they do it loudly, if they proclaim that, like, Biden is shit, he's old, and Biden refuses to drop out, then it's chaos. You understand? And the Democrats, the one thing that the Democrats cannot do right now is be chaotic because the major reason why people want to vote for the Democrats, and even they recognize this, is that they are organized. They are a serious party. They are not the weird, sweaty, psychopathic, um, you know, uh, anti-abortion, uh, uh, anti-democracy party. That's like... Just <coughs> <clears throat> that is legitimately their number one, like their number one uh, uh, advantage over the Republicans. Okay. So obviously they can't f that up. So it makes sense as to why you are trying to do a quiet whisper campaign behind closed doors and, and strengthen the ranks against Biden and try to figure out how you can, you know, get Biden out and put a new person in swiftly. Okay. This is a very chaotic moment that the Democrats are trying their very best to, to basically try to seem uh, as organized as possible. The only issue is Biden is deeply narcissistic, deeply selfish, and refusing to listen to those calls, okay? He's refusing to listen to those calls and, dare I say, taking advantage, knowing full well, potentially, that these guys can't come out and make bro bold proclamations. So he's just kind of saying, oh, nobody wants me out. What are you talking about? Shut the f*** up. Everybody loves me, knowing full well that the Democratic Party can't say, get the f*** out of the way. He is stubborn, and he is banking on what the Democratic Party has always banked on, which is that all of these donors, all of these donors, and all of the Democrats ultimately will fall in line because they are too fearful of giving a major dub to Donald Trump. So they will shut the f*** up and, 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 you know, elect a ham sandwich if that is what is necessary. And that's precisely what he is relying on right now, okay? And I believe, I believe that that is what uh, the, the future looks like right now. Everything that I've seen so far makes me feel as though that is going to be possibly the 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 next four months whatever the dems are doing is backfiring new spin is the rich districts want him out and the poor districts want him he's a man of the people what no that spin sucks that's awful it's like taking your grandparents key if you take them by force then it's chaos if you give if they give them up willingly then it's better for all involved i hate that spin i know it's spin but it's just like such bad spin uh, anyway, aid sometimes steps in to help. At a fundraiser in New York around the time of the UN General Assembly last fall, Biden seemed at a loss trying to answer questions about Middle East from people in a photo line. An aide whispered in Biden's ear. The person said that the, pres that the president answered. During a fundraiser at a Four Seasons in New York in June 2023, Biden spoke, to, Biden spoke for five to ten minutes, then took a few questions and said, uh, said the attendees who bought a ticket. At one point, Biden couldn't recall the word for veteran. The president asked the group, uh, to help him find the word, saying he wanted to refer to a person who had served in the Army or Navy. Officials said when Biden tripped, it was a commonplace accident, but nonetheless recognized as damaging political optics for, of Biden tumbling to the ground. In the following months, they took extra precautions to make sure he didn't trip again. He started wearing sneakers more often for better traction, and he often used shorter stairs when boarding Air Force One. I don't know what that means. How do you do shorter stairs? It's the same plane. I mean, this is, a, this is basically a Wall Street Journal article that this person is uh, summarizing for the record. I'm not just like looking at a random Twitter thread. Oh, more steps? Yeah. And information is coming out from the Senate and the House of Representatives Democratic Caucus sessions, and it does seem like they're just going to go with Joe. We got a ways to go. Senator Peter Welch uh, from Vermont says of Senate Dems being unified and believing Biden is Dems' best person to beat Trump. Asked what he meant by that. Well, says, I don't have my thoughts put in an orderly process that meets your editorial standards. Chuck Schumer answers all questions three at this post-lunch press conference the same way regarding support for Biden staying on as the damn nominee. I'm with Joe. Here's that video right now. Are you confident that President Biden has what it takes to win in November and serve the next four years? 
As I've said before, I'm with Joe. Senator yes. Schumer. As I've said before, I'm with Joe. <laughs> yeah. What happens to Biden's campaign funds already in account if he drops? Someone told me only Kamala can use it. It's a major factor in deciding his replacement. No, that's like, dude, if you think Joseph Robinette Brandon is going to literally sit on a mountain of cash and refuse to refuse to ship it off to whoever the f is running for president, you're out of your mind. Like that is a ridiculous. That's a ridiculous take. Yeah, no, he's just going to... What do you think happens to, to campaign funding in general when uh, races end and if they still have, like, additional funds? There's a surplus. That becomes your war purse, either for the next election or sometimes you literally take it and you give it to other candidates that are running in, like, races and stuff. I don't think there are significant... I don't think there are significant legal restrictions on how, um, how you can use those funds in general. Also, a big chunk of that is super PAC money anyway. Like homeless shelters? No. No. It's dependent on where the money is raised. <sighs> I read he does have a control over a portion and could sit on it, but the DNC controls most of it. Yeah, I don't think he can just like, like a lot of that, a lot of that stuff uh, is, is in the hands of, uh, in the hands of the DNC. You can't like fund yourself once the campaign is over. Like there are rules around like what you can do with that money. But I'm, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure you can't just like, I'm pretty sure you can't just like fund, you can't just like, I guess you could technically sit on it and not give it to anyone else and be like, Fuck you guys, okay, I'm not using these funds. But, uh, but there, there is, I don't, as far as I know, uh, as far as I understand, I don't think there's like, um, restrictions on what to do with the additional campaign funds in the end of a run or if like a, if like a like a person drops out of a race like you can i'm pretty sure you can like put it into other campaigns as long as it's not like personal use you know what i mean but they noted via email that harris would only be able to access those funds if she's at the top of the ticket in other words if she remained vice presidential nominee and the party picked a different presidential nominee that would be a different campaign no okay here, let's look at this. What would happen to Biden's campaign cash if he drops out? That's up to Kamala Harris. No, Kamala Harris has direct control over it as she is like on the campaign. Okay. She has direct control over it as she is on the campaign. But as far as like, you're asking me if there are legal restrictions as to like taking the money, um, like as if Biden decides to drop out personally, and then uh, where does he take that money? Where does he take that cash? There are, there are, restrictions on how you can use that money of course right you can't just like pocket it <laughs> that'd be ridiculous you can't just like pay hush money to a porn star and then misappropriate or misallocate those funds or or uh right that you're just uh, you know doing a legal retainer or some shit famously okay <laughs> someone that did that i can't i can't recall who it was but i i feel like there was a person who did that um <sighs> But Harris's name is listed on the FEC filings for both Biden's statement of candidacy and his campaign account for statement of organization, meaning she would likely be able to use the funds if she continues with the campaign. Campaign finance law also states that a campaign committee designated by a presidential candidate can be used by the party's vice presidential candidate. Both candidates are on the account. Okay. But they noted via email that Harris would only be able to access those funds if she was the top of the ticket. In other words, if she remained the vice presidential nominee and, and the party picked a different presidential nominee, that would be a different campaign. Gross said he was unsure if Harris was unable to access the funds if she remained the party's vice presidential nominee without Biden. That is such a unique scenario. I would think the campaign would want to seek an FEC opinion on that question. Okay. Kamala Harris being at the top of the ticket makes it easier because she has direct access to the funds. But as far as like additional law, like additional legal considerations as, as to like Biden. Okay. Yeah, there it is, dude. If Harris did not become the nominee under this scenario, the campaign's legal center campaign finance team noted that Biden's campaign money could be converted into a PAC, but a PAC can only make a small maximum donation of 3300 per election to another candidate. The Biden campaign could also refund donors' contributions who could in turn donate to a new candidate, which, no, I, I'm telling you, there are ways around this. That's ridiculous. Okay? 
No, it doesn't. No, I, I don't know why you guys are saying like Sam Cedar said this as well. Like, no, I, I, I don't believe that all of a sudden you have to light that money on fire. You know what I mean? New York Times says federal campaigns can transfer directly to the DNC. There you go. <clears throat> PACs can only donate a small amount directly, but can't they just buy ads for the new candidate? Exactly. Read the next paragraph too. Rashawn and Gross also noted that if Biden steps aside, the funds could be transferred to a charity or a super PAC, which would not be able to coordinate with the campaign. The funds could also be transferred to the national party. There you go. So what's up? Guys, we live in the United States of America. What the f*** are you talking about? You think that like... You think that there is like actual genuine legal boundaries on this shit? That's laughable. Excuse me. I think you forgot what country we're in for a brief moment when you thought that the, the, uh, <laughs> the legal lines are drawn almost exclusively around doing whatever the fuck you want. Okay. Yeah. There's, we're in a post citizens United world. There's no shot that they can't just like, juggle that thing around as much as they want no sam just said with kamala it's easier yeah no that's what i mean yeah like i i agree of course kamala has direct access if she's at the top of the ticket kamala has direct access i understand that but as far as like using that money the idea that it's gonna like pee pee poof is very silly okay no shot no way no shot anyway um, latest, President Biden's biggest supporters and skeptics in the Senate remained at odds after a closed-door meeting on Tuesday afternoon. Oh, God. Ugh. Anyway, um, uh, have you covered this? Definitely going to affect my job as an environmental scientist. Uh, the Chevron uh, deference, yes. Um, I have briefly covered it. We'll talk about it a little bit more uh, potentially today. I was shocked to find out that you have 200-plus MasterChef videos. Ha, ha, ha. Let me tell you, don't be shocked. I am not a political commentator. I am a master chef reactor originally. Um, okay. Let's get back to this shit show of a press and conference and then we'll move on a little bit if there's not enough drama. Not something that I can speak to from here. Go ahead, Karen. Uh, thank you. The president's come out very aggressively in the past 24 hours in that letter to Democrats, the call in to MSNBC, the phone call with donors, the CBC last night. Uh, was that his decision? personally yes. to step up that outreach it has been he, he is he's he's ready he's he's on fire he's ready to go uh and he wants to get out there uh, and continue uh to show that he has more work to do right he has more uh more important issues for the american people uh to get done and so he wants to get out there he's always has though i mean the last two two and a half years three years uh three and a half years he looks forward to getting out there, speaking directly to the American people. Uh, and he, I know we say this, and I know sometimes you guys don't believe us, but he does want to engage with you all. He does want to talk uh -huh. more to the press. And so now we're, we're certainly going to continue to create opportunities to do that. He's done interviews 47 times in this year alone, and we're going to continue to create opportunities to do this. We're going to get out there so he can engage uh, with the American people more directly so we're going to continue to do that but in terms of you know especially in the last 24 hours yeah. that type of outreach to ease concerns among democrats about his campaign continuing was there something specific that he heard or read that prompted this would seem more like a flurry over the last 24 hours that no. didn't happen last week we yeah. really saw him doing no, more i get it yesterday. no i get the question look I, I wouldn't say there's anything specific this is something that he wanted to do uh and if you if you think about it you know, he was he's been on the road a lot uh, since since the uh, uh, since the debate. He was on the road on Friday. He was on the road on Sunday. And then right out of the debate. Right. He did about two uh, he did two and a half days of going into about four states. So he's just been on the road, busy uh, engaging with with uh, with Americans. But and he did the ABC interview, as you know, obviously. Uh, and so he wants to do more. He wants to do more. There's nothing specific, but he understands he understands what, what you all saw, right? He understand he had a bad debate. He understand that Ameri what Americans saw. So he wants to go out there, and continue to prove to all of you that uh, you know he continued to can continue to do the work and, and the job. That outreach is okay. I can't keep listening to this over and over again. All We're right. gonna be 
Biden's doctor releases letter amid a report. A Parkinson's specialist visited the White House. This was a big deal yesterday. New York Times did some reporting on it. A Parkinson's specialist, like a neurologist with a uh, specialty in Parkinson's, visited the White House eight times on eight different instances and actually had correspondence with actually had correspondence with Biden's personal physician. Uh, this obviously became a matter of of uh, you know importance especially uh, right now as uh, people are calling into question Biden's mental faculties. Uh, and Karine Jean-Pierre had a heated exchange yesterday in the press conference with Ed O'Keefe. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, this new letter that was released by Biden's doctor on his uh, potential for having Parkinson's. Begin, though, with a defiant President Biden pushing back very forcefully against pressure to drop out of this presidential race on live TV yesterday. He dared anyone in his party to challenge him for the nomination. And now he is winning some key support from members of Congress. Also this morning, the administration is clarifying why a neurologist made multiple visits to the White House. Nancy Cordes, of course, is following all of this. Nancy, good morning. There are so many questions today. Good to see you. Good morning, Gail. And now we have some answers. Late last night, the president's personal physician released this letter stating that a neurologist who has visited the White House repeatedly over the past year was not here to care for President Biden and has been treating patients from time to time in the White House medical unit for the past 12 years. The Biden camp making the case aggressively Monday that it is now time for the party to move on. President Biden made it through Monday without any new Democratic defections and with some key backing from his party's House leader. I support President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. And from. That was a weird one, too. He said, I support Joe Biden, President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. I thought that was strange. Like the way he positioned that I thought was kind of odd because it's like. Why don't you just say use the board President Joe Biden and uh, and him running, like him staying on the ticket? <laughs> I thought he said four. No, no, I, I no, I'm pretty sure he said and President Joe Biden and the Democratic ticket. Anyway, he's just you know he's just playing it safe. High you know who's not playing it safe? AOC. A I mean, I guess she technically is playing politics and is playing it safe in terms of. In terms of the uh, Hassan, you are coping. Wait, what? No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Make no mistake. I'm I'm seeing the writing on the wall. I'm I'm saying that the Democrats are probably gonna uh, go with Joe. I I think that they're gonna go with Joe because they're <laughs> stupid and cowardly and also have no backbone and uh, can't even do something. Uh, can't even do something that is like that is going to ultimately help them in the long run. She's playing politics for her own personal ambitions that are benefiting the working class. Dude, I love... God, this is so stupid. Guys, what difference does it make in this circumstance? Like, what, what could she be doing uh, that would benefit the working class? We're talking about electoral politics. We're talking about the Democratic Party. Like, like no, seriously, in this moment, she should be like, what? We should kill Joe Biden. Is that what you should be saying? Like, for we should do a proletarian revolution. Like, what, what, what are we talking about here? Like, I think that her instinct to go above and beyond to defend Joe Biden instead of just saying I'm sitting this one out is bad. Okay, it's not smart to do that. It's not smart to go balls to the wall in the way that she did. You can look at other progressive politicians, a part of the progressive caucus. And, uh, uh, you know, that are obviously anti-establishment Democrat, for the most part, who have been phenomenally critical of Biden's administration, saying much lighter things about Biden, even though they do also, um, they do also take a stance that is significantly more pro-Biden than the top of the establishment institutionalist Democrats. You have to ask, why? Why is Nancy Pelosi more concerned about taking Biden out than AOC. For AOC, it's win-win. Everybody knows she's already, uh, everybody knows she's going to be a galvanizing force for the youth vote. She is a progressive figurehead in the party. She is the progressive beacon in the Democratic Party. She is, in many respects, most of the time considered an outsider. The squad is always considered outsiders in general. Ultimately, her 
sitting this one out and allowing the actual establishment Democrats who have significantly more staying power, significantly more momentum in changing course, changing the trajectory of what the DNC does than AOC. But she didn't sit it out. She basically came out and was like, oh, I love Biden. He's the best. He's the best on the ticket. He's the best we got, which I think is bad. I think that it's silly to go above and beyond. As far as playing politics goes, if Biden stays on the ticket, then she has uh, more access to Biden in her own personal calculation. She has more access to Biden, not to like do a proletarian revolution, mind you. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. She has more access to Biden to get certain things, um, get better, like more, more access to the Democratic Party's leadership, better committee positions, a uh, uh, better way to enact at least some parts of the legislative agenda, that kind of thing. But if Biden isn't the top of the ticket as the uh, Democratic Party's uh, establishment figureheads are demanding he drop out as quietly as possible, okay, as best as they possibly can, then it doesn't matter because she's still a progressive bulwark. So it do, they're going to, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, you defended Biden. So we're not giving you shit. That's it. But as far as in this moment, like what you're like, you need to, you need to understand you cannot rely on politicians. Like you cannot expect politicians to legitimately, uh, you cannot expect politicians to, to basically especially progressive politicians in this moment, while the establishment politicians are the ones who are demanding that Biden step out, why the fuck would progressive politicians put their name on the board? Okay? Why would they put themselves out there? It makes no sense. There is no reason for Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and all these people who have been up Biden's ass nonstop to put their name out there as anti-Biden. There's just no reason for them to do so. When Nancy Pelosi is the one doing it, the only thing you do in that situation is potentially get a bunch of people who are geared towards hating you anyway to go, see, it's the woke socialists that want Biden out. Biden is the best guy we have. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why you guys don't see this. Yeah, all of a sudden, you're just giving the, uh, the Biden holdouts more ammunition to be like, see, the left is interested in uh, the left is interested in destroying the party. We're going to lose because of the left and not because Joe Biden is old as shit because they're scared of young progressives splitting the vote and Trump winning. They're trying to do a French election. No. Uh, what? I'm not a Brandon Dick writer, but honestly, I have a hard time seeing how we could have a better option for defeating Trump. Every single person that is committed to voting for Joe Biden right now is already going to vote for whoever the fuck is the Democratic Party candidate. Not a single person is going to be like, I'm not voting if it's not Biden. And any other, any other candidate would bring additional votes on top of that. I was originally mad at Bernie, but you're right. Yeah, I don't... Like, this is not a circumstance. This is not a circumstance where progressives coming out... Ilhan Omar has literally been up Biden's asshole, okay? About this Gaza shit. Even AOC has been very outwardly critical about the immigration stuff that Biden has done. And also uh, Gaza. She was on this broadcast criticizing Biden. For both of those things, why are they taking a stance? A question you have to ask yourself is, why are these candidates, why, why are these politicians that are supposed to be progressive, dare I say radical, which is laughable, of course they're not radical, why are they taking a pro-Biden position when Nadler is saying Biden needs to step aside, when Nancy Pelosi is basically leaning on Biden stepping aside and leaking that she has concerns about Biden's age. What the f are you guys talking about? Please think a lot of you either a demand that like the Bernie's and the AOC's of the world, uh, become, I don't know, vanguardists or something within the democratic party. Or you also personally recognize that obviously politicians are not going to do shit for you. And at the end of the day, you have to literally co operate completely outside of electoral politics if you want to get anything done. And even then, you're probably going to fail across the board. And yet, you still want to chirp to do a uh, I told you so moment. Okay? I don't know why you don't see this. Uh, I, and I, I don't know how to describe it in any other way.
Jank was not thrilled with AOC about it. No, I, I'm telling you right now, I, this is, her message on this was bad, okay? It was not good. She should not have gone above and beyond. She should have just been like, listen, I care about making sure the Republicans are not in office. I care about Project 2025. I care about, you know, uh, uplifting the American working class. I care about the American workers. I care about climate justice. I, all of this other stuff, uh, I, it's not within my purview. I'm just going to keep uh, advocating for those things. I'm going to keep seeing who I can get my legislative agenda across with. It doesn't matter. Instead of just being like, I think Biden is the best. I love Biden. Profile progressives like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The matter is closed. He is not leaving this race. He is in this race and I support him. It came after Biden himself turned up the heat on Democratic doubters Monday with a defiant appearance by phone on cable news. But if any of these guys yeah. don't think I should let them run against me, go ahead, announce the announce president. Challenge me at the convention. He also sent a two-page letter to congressional Democrats, insisting it's time for this debate over his health to end. Has the president been treated for Parkinson's? No. Is he being treated for Parkinson's? No, he's not. Is he taking medication for Parkinson's? No. White House officials initially declined to say Monday why Dr. Kevin Kennard, a neurologist and Parkinson's specialist, had visited the White House eight times in eight months. I am not sharing confirming names from here. It is a security reason. But late last night, the president's personal doctor revealed that while Dr. Kennard was the neurological specialist that examined Biden for each of his annual physicals, President Biden has not seen a neurologist outside of his annual physical, and that Kennard sees a variety of patients and problems when visiting the White House medical unit. Look, it's not Parkinson's, it's Alzheimer's. Telling you, I don't think it's Parkinson's, man. I don't think it's Parkinson's, okay? But as I said yesterday, if you are wondering, once again, why the fucking squad is pro-Biden, seemingly, outwardly, it's because they do not want to fuck up the bag. They do not want to disturb the process that is taking place. You can say I'm wrong about this. This is my speculation. This is what I think is the smart political move for them, even though AOC statements on it were not good. AOC statements on it went above and beyond. She should just not have said that at all. You got Hakeem Jeffries being like, I support President Biden and the Democratic ticket. Why is AOC not just saying that? Why does AOC have to go, Biden, it's done. It's a matter. It's, it's over. Biden is the candidate. I love him. He's great. Do you understand what I mean? Look at all of the other Look at all of the other progressive members of the Democratic Party. Look at what they said. They all said they're with Biden. Do you guys think that they are more in tune with the establishment side, the establishment wing of the Democratic Party? They are to the right of like Mark Warner. Are they to the right of Nadler? Are they to the actual right ideologically of, of uh, all of these other Democratic Party uh, Democratic Party establishment figureheads? Are you insane? Do you legitimately think that? On this single issue, yes. Okay, then you are insane. No, they're playing politics. They're politicians. You have to be schizophrenic to imagine a reality where people who are literally saying, are you still coping about AOC? This is not about AOC. I'm coping about the reality that so many in this community, every single time AOC comes into question, so many people in this community literally lose their minds, okay? You can't just be like, listen, dog, she made, this is a bad statement. She has bad instincts in the sense that she is communicating something where she's going above and beyond unnecessarily. I do think she's wrong to go above and beyond, but I do personally speculate the reason why she's doing this, just like Ilhan Omar, and just like Premier Jayapal and all these other Democrats in the Progressive Caucus is because they don't want to make this a left issue. Hating on a schizophrenics again. Um, uh, you're making me a piece of shit according to you. Okay, I'm sorry for saying schizophrenics. I should have said hallucinations. People are hallucinating. Take a week off. You're not a bad person. <sighs> you say that after you banned them? Yeah, I banned them because they're derailing and moving the conversation away in a deeply selfish way, okay? Yeah, you do that, I'll ban your bitch ass too. Do not arbitrarily ban schizophrenic person. What are you doing? Here you go. Actually, you know what? I'll perma you. What do you mean? 
dude, you don't get to steer the conversation in whichever way, whichever direction you want to. Okay. I don't think you understand how this works. Maybe some of you are confused by this process and how this situation works here. Okay. You don't get to like, there's no world in which you go into a stadium and I don't know, they're like playing soccer and you go down there and you're like, I don't like the way you're playing soccer. Stop it right now. There's 23,000 other people watching, but you need to stop the way you're playing soccer. Okay. Like it doesn't work that way. You get ejected. I'm not going to accommodate for all of the narcissistic tendencies of every single chatter, no matter how much you agree with that chatter. Okay. Anyway, how are you not like Stalin with your Stalin is banned from your chat? I am like Stalin. I make Stalin look like an anarchist sometimes. This is not a democratic process. This is as close to a democratic process as possible, but that doesn't mean you can get away with whatever the fuck you want to do. Anyway, <clears throat> but you think they'll not get massive backlash when Joe gets cooked? No, I don't think so. You, because they're, they're portraying, look, I said this yesterday and I will repeat it. When I say Joe Biden needs to drop out, he's old and demented. As I have said since 2019, when I said he shouldn't run, he's old and demented. Okay. Do you think the Democratic Party listens to my words? Or do you think it's significantly more powerful for that message to come from someone like Nancy Pelosi, who's also old and demented and an establishment Democrat? AOC saying Biden needs to drop out is not going to have the same staying power if it might even have negative consequences in terms of polarizing people to push for Biden, okay? That's it. That's why there's a difference when the pod John say Biden is too old, he should perhaps uh, step aside versus me saying Biden is too old and he should step aside. Do you understand? Do you get what I mean? Or maybe you don't, I don't know. We finally beat Medicare. Several Senate Democrats said yesterday they want more time after last month's debate to see how things go for Biden. I think um, a lot of folks are raising some questions. They need to get asked, but at the end of the day, we got to beat Donald Trump. Congressman Adam Smith is one of the nine House Democrats who say they've seen enough. We would be better off with another nominee, okay? I believe that in my heart, my soul, my brain. I'm 100% convinced of that. Biden's opponent, Donald Trump, has been keeping a low profile without any public appearances in 11 days. He resurfaced last night in an interview with Sean Hannity on Fox News. It looks to me like he may very well stay in. He's got an ego and he doesn't want to quit. Today, President Biden addresses foreign leaders at the NATO summit taking place here in Washington, D.C. And on Thursday, he's going to hold a rare... Dude, like Adam Smith, for those of you who are wondering, like, who's this guy, Adam Smith? Is that the godfather of, uh, you know, neoliberal, or not neoliberal, but like capitalist uh, uh, economics? No, man. That's a ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee. Okay? Like... There's a very big difference when a guy like that is saying Biden has to step aside versus AOC. That's what I'm saying. Nadler is another person. No, I'm talking about Adam Smith, the person that you just saw. And Adam Schiff as well, by the way. More like Adam shit. Why are you so mad, Turkey Boy? I get, I get really upset with my own community when they don't trust my instincts at all and like uh, or when they when they have their own like personal vendetta and their own like personal opinions that just like go above and beyond where I see people acting irrationally. Okay. And yes, sometimes I am wrong for the record. And I regularly will admit that. The problem is in this circumstance, even when I speculate, people, and I openly admit that I'm speculating, people won't just go, uh, okay, that's speculation. I disagree with it. They go, you're literally coping because you love AOC and you can never actually defy her. And I have, in my mind, a secret, like I'm, I'm assuming cynically that you have a secret cynical reason for your actual agenda. And it's like, dude, what the fuck? I feel like I've earned the trust of people in this community to a certain degree. And it's very frustrating when I see people behave inside of my own community, when I see people behave like these psychos. Okay, no, Biden stepping down doesn't mean war, war chest is lost. That's that's wrong. You're wrong about that. <clears throat> the Democrats who've called on Joe Biden to step down. A growing number of Democratic officials have publicly called for Biden to quit or reportedly done so in private. Lloyd Doggett was the first one last week. Raul Graval Grijalva, a senior progressive from a battleground state. <laughs> Seth Moulton, 
former U.S. Marine, briefly challenged Biden for the nomination in 2020. President Biden has done enormous service to our country. Okay, he needs to step aside. Mike Quigley from Illinois. Mr. President, your legacy is set. We owe you the greatest debt of gratitude. This probably doesn't feature like the actual statements that uh, people have made that you can infer are actually people uh, are, are actually people saying like Biden should definitely step aside, but in a gentler way. These are actual outward, like you have to step aside shit, okay? I hope you guys understand why I get mad, by the way, when you guys uh, behave in an irrational, behave in a way that I consider to be irrational, when you don't trust my instincts at all. But beyond that, you also make secondary inferences, um, secondary inferences about like my other secret motivations. Like I, when have I not been truthful to a fault? When have in the, when over the course of the past 10 years of my professional career as a political commentator, have I not been truthful to a goddamn fault? Why would you suspect me of secretly having a different motivation in this circumstance? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It's the most frustrating thing that I have to deal with. And it's additionally, additionally frustrating when it's coming from people who literally have for 46 months refused to see the top of the hour ad break because they've subscribed. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. Okay. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's a mic drop. To be fair, they're just parroting shit they heard Mike from PA say this morning. Wouldn't take stock of their critique. It seems like record shit, not Mike. Just people parroting it without nuance. Muffin Coats, thank you for the five. Get this up. It's allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour.